Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. This is part two of a great day and a second video shot with my friend Melinda Bird at Bird Call Studio in Woodbine. Woodbine, thank you. Um, how did I forget? I almost said Evening Primrose because Woodbine is a flower too, yeah. right? Uh, yep. <laughs> it's definitely Woodbine. So if you didn't catch the first video, we loaded a great practical video looking at your studio, looking at the rear rugs, looking at you nodding rear rugs, right? Uh, really learning about the background to um, looking at different rugs and, and um, pulling out their features, the blended colors, the loops versus cut, different aspects of a finished rug. So now it's time for me to start working on a rug project. And this is, this is where you will begin, right? When you are sitting there at a table, blank canvas style, and you're thinking, where do I begin? So I began when I first, when I first discovered you and found your mm -hmm. fantastic book. I ordered a basic kit with some, with some colors that are not basic, right, that I chose. Mm -hmm. But in this kit came this packet, right, which is, which is the, if you watched part one of the video, the chart paper that we were talking about Right, information, lots of information right in here. And all the samples of every color. Oh, it has samples in there. <laughs> oh my gosh, let me bust that open, <laughs> hang on. Cause that's very handy. Yeah. That's, it's a sample packet. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah. This is, we talk about this a lot in class and stuff, you know, talking about colors, needles. Um, needles. And assigning names to color is very important, right? Because we all see colors differently. So right. I can't call you up for some eggplant colored wool because you'll be like, well, do you mean cranberry or Oh, no, I know eggplant. You do. <laughs> <laughs> and this also has backing samples. Mm -hmm. So these, this is very good to know. Now, and priceless. And priceless. And a person coming to it from the beginning would probably not have a, a knee-jerk reaction as to what backing they were supposed to be using. So right. that would be a phone call to you. Yes, but if they had the samples and they could say, oh, I really like the weight of this one, but, but, I mean, but this one's less expensive and is this yeah. a good one? And I can talk them through it. So making the phone call is it, right? Because Melinda is here in the studio and you're able to visit if you call and set up an appointment, that kind of thing, so that she knows to be here. And she's certainly here to answer your questions and be a great sounding board mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that decision would be made. And, and of course the huge decision about color and design Let's talk about color first because these samples are here. You get to get a feel for um, what colors you might want in your piece. This is extremely handy. Yes, it is. Oh, I didn't even open this. What a jerk I am. <laughs> I was waiting to open it with Melinda. You know, I knew I'd be coming sooner or later. Chart paper, color samples. This, it, this is the book itself, right? This is the mm -hmm. book. Fantastic. This is a very comprehensive packet. That you yes. put in. This is valuable and just to keep for years because you never know. Even with other projects, you might want to. Yeah, and use it's it. nice to see because this weight of yarn, the Ra Rama, oh, Ram that's the company, Pr yeah. Pridvigern. Okay, it's a long word, but it's beautiful much, yarn. It's beautiful. It's much finer mm -hmm. um, than some of these other yarns. This one is more highly spun, so the texture on that is a little bit. Well, I, mean, I guess they're well, all highly spun. This one is too. Yeah, but this is just a, a heavier. Bulk of, of yarn yeah. in the twist. It's very dense. And this is heavier yet. No, this is heavy. This is oh, the heaviest. Oh, is that the heaviest yeah. one? Like if you squeeze a skein of Ria garn, you, your hand can't close. Ooh. Um, but that's, that's a other good measure. Yarn. And this is another good yarn that you have here, but we won't jump ahead. Okay. Well, it's great to have all you know all these kinds of samples, color wise, texture wise, thickness wise, because we saw in the first video sometimes you mix a thinner texture with a thicker texture. Yeah. Yeah. And that creates a lot of excitement. So this, this kit to start out with is amazing because I've got my chart paper, I've got color samples so I can start planning in my mind, I've got needles and it came with a backing. Mm -hmm. And this is the backing I'm gonna use today to start my rug and you've even got a little needle here to get me going. Yep, I made some knots just to show you how to start and get rolling, yep. not knowing what your experience was. It, that's, it's extremely helpful. Um, yeah, that's super fun. And I also, I ordered this one too, I think, right? The blocks yes. that yeah. you keep the needles in. Well, you bought a designer a designer kit. Mm -hmm. So in the designer kit, the backing, the block, the samples, but not all the yarn, because that was what someone had to pick out on their own, but you picked it out too. So all of those basic things were in the kit. Mm -hmm. And that was fantastic. And the reason I bought this yarn at that time was because it was your grandparents' mm -hmm. yarn. And I wanted to be sure that I had some of all of these colors. So for these colors, you can see I've picked out uh, autumn colors, right? And I do have an idea for an autumn project um, using this yarn, but 
for today. It is the height of summer. If you caught part one of the video, right? We walked through Melinda's garden. It is the height of summer. And I want to do a summer project today. So I'm going to save these. These are like treasures to me because they, they have special significance to you and your family. These are treasures, but this is going to make a beautiful autumn rug, probably not too in the not too distant future. But in the meantime, let me put all this stuff back. We're going to keep our backing out. And we're going to talk about a new design and planning a rug right now. And of course, I'm not going to make it, but I'm going to plan it with you. And we're going to start it so that you know what the steps are to starting a new rug. Now, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to do this right off the cuff. So obviously, if you are not used to designing a seat of the pants style, um, you might want to work on it on a chart, do sketches like you showed us in the first video, doing the window pane, coming up with a crop of like a composition idea, and then translating what your idea is into a line drawing, and you refine it as you go, right? Um, you, you figure it out until you get from point A to point B, and point B is where you want to be to do the next step, which is to get it onto your backing. I'm going to just put this directly on backing because I, I work like an animal. At, if, as you know. You're brave. I always draw it out on paper first just to just to see what I'm going to do and then and then I attack. It's smart but you know I'm going to base this design on um, I'm going to base this design on a design that's been popular in the store lately and it is a mid-century design the split bloom garden and I have that done as a mini punch a Russian punch pattern so I'm going to use the same premise because it's an easy uh, mid-century design and I really feel like the rear rug form really lends itself best to mid-century designs because um, it's very shape driven, right? It's very color driven, color and, and shapey, um, not a lot of fine detail. And you just introduced me to this amazing tool that I did not know existed. It is a flexible, flexible ruler. It's a flexible ruler. So what I want to do, I want to, for, for me with my design, I want to split up the background because um, I don't want it to be a pure geometric. I still want it to be a floral and pointing out toward the beautiful garden outside. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be able to have my flowers in here, but I want to break up the background so that for me there's more interest in the background and there's some color changes. And I was going to do it with straight lines, but then Melinda said, do you know this guy? And I don't know this guy. So let's use this guy and just um, do some breaking down of the background. Let me see what might work. Um, let me start down here and do something like <laughs> this. This is fun for me to watch. You know, whatever it is, it'll be fine. And if I change my mind, I suppose yeah. I could either flip it over or take out a different color sharpie. Mm -hmm. And the line will be, this will all be covered up with the yarn, so no matter what you do or undo, you can, you won't see it in You'll the You'll never see this part of it. So this is gonna be my sort of division where there's a break between, and I'm gonna do another one too, mm -hmm. but I'll probably put like uh, stylized flowers on it like this. And oh. I usually like it when my flowers are yeah. not equal. So maybe something like this. Mm -hmm. And I'll add some leaves too. I want to be sure that we address this corner pretty nicely. You are good. <laughs> well, I'm uh, foolhardy. No, but I mean, <laughs> you 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 have a steady hand. Put it that way. It'll be good enough because, like you said, everything is hidden. I don't want to come too close to the border, but I probably want one little flower there. Thinking about the shape of flower, I guess I'll do. I, I, maybe I'll do like a brutalist type flower because mid-century. And I usually don't like it when things match up, so maybe something like this. Mm -hmm. So that'll be, and I'll come up with another leaf here, but then maybe I'll fool with this again. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do, let's do something like this at the top. We'll resolve. I'm gonna bring yep. him down here. Maybe, I like this flexible I ruler know. thing. Well, it's like you can't go wrong with it. No. Maybe what? Yeah, and maybe let's do something like this. And then design-wise, we'll fill the rest of it out. So those are my two basic lines. I suppose I could really do one more. You know, let's do this yeah. just for fun, just so to keep it off. The flexible ruler is really good for repeating patterns. If you yeah. like a, a flow, you can kind of fan can, it out. Yeah, you can even keep it in the same shape yeah. if you wanted to do yeah. some kind of a repeat thing. Mm. I think That's I'm good nice. like that. And then let's just add flowers in places that make sense. So we'll add one here that's maybe a little bit smaller. And the, and the, this flower will be split on both sides and the center will be split as well. Sometimes I like the center off center so the mm -hmm. center doesn't get split. But then I'd be looking for two color combinations for this ring for, and for this ring. So let's see, maybe I'll do, I'm gonna need something here. Um, let's put one small one here. Hey, you want a job? <laughs> <laughs> 
this is this is would be a fun place to work for sure. It would. Um, do something like that, and yeah, we'll do an odd one here, because then we have then we have the possibility of lots of greens. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Different sizes, and I think this is going to be a natural right here. Maybe we'll get one more large one here. Something like this. Um, and I'll point out while you're drawing that as people, you might wonder, you know, how will she know exactly where the knots go? She'll she'll be calling the shots as she goes because when you draw on the backing, sometimes it's really clear where the knot goes, but other times it's like, well, gee, do I put it here or here? I mean, you just have to go with whatever you feel like. A graph tells you exactly where to put it. This it just means you. Go with the flow. I like to go in with the flow. Maybe I'll put one more here. Like, for example, like here, does it arc up here? Oh, yeah. But this will be a straight line. Yes, you're right. You're right. Unless you were to put knots up here. But then that might wang it out where you don't want it to go. So, But then the yarn will flex it out. So you don't worry about that kind of thing. I, just, exactly. I feel like it's a very forgiving medium. And I feel like if I'm not precious about the lines in this strong, yeah. I'm curious to see how it plays out with the knots. Yeah. And it will be altered a little bit because of the elongated grid to this kind of backing, right? For in any rear run backing. So it'll be curious to see how it turns out. And since I'm not completely married to it, um, it's going to work. I can tell you right now, this is going to be a beautiful design. Thank you. I think this is going to be fun. I don't want to overdo it, but I also don't want so much background going that the background becomes a feature. Um, I want a lot of colors. Uh -huh. So I think uh -huh. we're probably there, right? I can always add some more later. Mm -hmm. Maybe one little one here. Anchor the corner. Yep. I think we're good. So, okay. It's good to get that part done. Um, so we were talking about... Um, oh, I see one, two, three, four, five, six. I asked you before about the different tiers, and you said that mm -hmm. one, like the what was the word you used? Uh, to, oh, the, the distinctions between the different levels. Well, that's just part of the it into like quadrants or something. Is that what you mean? I mean, yeah, there's one where I had divided it, but it's just it's helpful to think of it in terms of um, geometry because it breaks it up a little bit, it's just more manageable. Um, so now I'm at a place where I need to think about my color plan. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do those autumn colors because I'm saving those. So oh, I want to do summer colors. And, so, and this was a different, re oh, it's time for a color card. And I'll have to think about what the title of it will be. That'll take no some rush. time. No yeah. rush. But this is going to be a lot of fun. So my color cards is Bird Call Studio. And I'm going to choose, I'm going to, and each of these is going to contain three strands because it's going to be an example of the color fill for that um, cell or mm -hmm. compartment. You're making your own paint by number knotting mm -hmm. palette. Do you ever draw the number onto the yes. thing? Just in, okay, yeah. just in you, case. Either that or you'd have to draw this out. Yes. We'll take a picture of it and reduce it and like draw on the picture, but yeah. You, yeah. You need to to know what you know what's gonna go where unless you just want to add libit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Now, with the stems on this, do you see that as being a problem? Do you see them as being weak and too filigree? Um, you, w would you visualize a stem that people would see or, or an area where two colors meet? You're right. Let's just do the two colors meet without the stem. Let's just do that. Yeah. That's way more artsy. <laughs> so let's do that. That's what, that's what you have here. Because right now, yeah, it goes from here to here yeah. and there's no stem. Yeah. That's what I did on Split Bloom Garden, too. I didn't have a stem. I just had the leaves and no, and everything else was marked by division. Yeah. So two things. So I don't want to, this is a different lot of rear yarn that I got after we did the, sh the show last year. Like, it's the live show, not in person. And um, these came in the mail, and these are lovely colors, not this one. These are lovely colors. And you said, this is all legit. Yeah, this is really yarn. good Swedish vintage yarn. Great buy. So this was fun because I like the color scheme. I don't want to necessarily use just this color scheme. And I asked you a wacky question when we were off camera that we might as well answer now because you saw that I was holding this. I brought this in because when I was in the studio getting my stuff ready to bring for this trip, I found this yarn that I had gotten God knows when at a yarn store. And we know this kind of yarn is usually $30, $40 a skein. And I want to use it like properly because I love it. It reminds me of like a tie-dye shirt. 
Um, I love it, but I want to use it properly and, and make it worth the while, you know, worth the expense. So I asked you, could you use, you knowing that there's three, three fibers per knot, three strands, could you use this kind of any wool that you find, right? Could you use it and in, in incorporate it into a rear rug? Yeah. And it was, it, you, you can, mm -hmm. my hesitation was, it's a very soft yarn. Yeah. It's more the softness than the color. Yeah. Um, except you wouldn't know what the color was going to do, but but it might be magical. So, right. and that's so exciting, isn't it? Yeah. But you don't know. It might be um, it, like hit or miss. Might be a miss. Yeah, most likely not. I mean, there's so few misses in, yeah. in color, but um, could create confusion or it could create interest. Yeah, yeah, it's. I, yeah, it's, it's it's worth trying. Yeah, the one thing that I'd be worried about, I wouldn't, I would use like maybe one strand or two strands with a, with the much thicker one, so that mm -hmm. the integrity was there for each knot. But yeah. my, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, kind of strike out and use three strands of just this one in a whole area because it is thinner, and I would worry that that area looked hollow, like it wasn't as dense as the rest of it because it's not as thick as the rest of it. You have definite lines on your backing. Yeah, this would. Um, not the lines would lose their shape. They definitely would. Yeah. This might be better for like a border or something like that, or yeah. a hit or miss. Hit pattern. or miss. Yeah. yeah. So, so I love the answer to that because that was very clear and it made a lot of sense. And I still love this, and I'm going to think about using it another time. But right now, I want to focus on just using the solid colors because it is a busy composition, and it's not much of a hit or miss. Although the color planning can be done in a hit or miss manner. So I want to look at, we might do a bit of stopping and starting here. We found some, these are the colors that came with the eBay thing. And I want to immediately eliminate some of them. Like the neutrals for me right now are not singing of spring. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get rid of those really strong neutrals. These are richer colors. Don't know if I want the full palette. I'm probably going to eliminate blue because I am not a blue person at all. Um, and we found some other colors that could be interesting. I think the first thing we need to think about is the background colors, mm -hmm. because that is going to be, I need three background colors. No, I need four background colors. One, two, three, four. And it makes the most sense for them to be light colors, do you think? Um, for, well, I can see it with light colors. I can see it with the other way around, too. You know, you're right, because if, for example, um, Say I did the center one in a, in a vanilla or a white. You've got so many beautiful whites, and they're all different. Yes. I could do, ooh, ooh. Oh, I love those. I love those together, too. The, the cream and white? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, this might be a good time to talk about the grab bag as well. Oh, that's even a brighter white. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. All right. I want to show this because I got all... Um, excited when I saw this. Melinda, you you have these in your Etsy store. These are essentially like grab bags of of smaller quantities and pieces that can't be repeated because they're like at the end of their run or yeah. whatever. Yeah, they don't even, some, some of them don't have color numbers. Um, it's all really good Rhea yarn from yeah. Sweden or um, Norway, maybe Finland. Um, and there's so I just packaged them according to things that I, if I was going to make a fun rug about this big, this yarn is ample. This is about um, 479 grams, which is about five skeins. The backing that I, I send with these kits holds about three and a half skeins. So there would be over a skein left over. So it's just a, like a, do, what, a you, do what you want with it. No, no design, just... Play. plug them into shapes and this is so handy because even even for somebody like me where I do my color planning all the time when I saw your color planning I liked it I liked it better it's that same principle of when you're young and you want to wear your friends clothes right it's like it's way more fun so I want to base my color plan on this grab bag and these are available on your Etsy store and that's called bird call studio yeah I think just bird call bird call and, and it's always up to date so if you are looking for a grab bag and you're thinking I'm gonna start with that that makes the most sense for me and uh, maybe you're not a huge fan of color planning or you just see Melinda's colors and you think, oh, well, that, I mean, that's really harmonious and I couldn't do any better than that. Then you always have these available and yeah. the ones that are there for sale and get them when you can, right? 
So I'm going to start. Can I open this yeah. one? So this is on Etsy right now. So as soon as we depart today, <laughs> I'm going to run to my computer and, and take it off so nobody else buys it because okay. it won't be available. All right. And how but, much is this kind of a grab bag? Uh, well, I, what I do is the, the kit with the backing, and it's it's $85. So is it going to screw you up if I use this? No. I can I can just put make another one. And Are you take, sure? Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. Because this will be a great base. Do you think for the scrub? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, it's, it's, it sings spring to me, and you're going to add it, other colors to it. It does. Well, I really like, I like the amount of greens. I like the icy purple color, and I feel like it goes really well with some of my colors. And it has a few weights. And you don't have to use them all. If any don't work with your plan, you just leave them out. Yeah. Look at it. I love this crazy color here, yeah. too. See, these are some, these are a repeat of white, right? And then, but then there's this one, and there's this one that yeah. could... This could maybe do mileage in the center because it's the largest piece, and maybe uh -huh. I need a lot of weight for that. Yeah. I mean, it, it depends. This will take about six skeins, this backing. Um, maybe seven skeins, let's yeah. say, to be, not to be cutting yourself short. Yeah. So um, you've got five right here, pretty much. So you don't need too much more. Okay. But I like the idea of... Uh, is this color similar to that color there? I like this for the background. Very similar. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay, I also like this for the background. I wonder if one, two, three, four, if those could be my background mm -hmm. colors. They all, they would go nice together. And this blend could, nicely. Yeah, and it could be a great sort of vehicle for um, for adding a lot of colorful flowers. We did? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's say that these are our background colors. Mm -hmm. And, all right, and then I'm going to need... These, I mean, I'm going to be quite literal, right? And we know you don't have to be literal with art. I could have like green leaves and black flowers if I want. You do whatever you want. Um, these are all good greens. And I love that this one is such a cool green. Oh, sorry. Is that right in the way? <laughs> I knew we did. You're just signaling something. This is also a beautiful one, but I only have, see, these go to great as a background. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. You said you don't want blues. I thought I didn't, but the worm <laughs> turns something. One, two, three. Say one, two, three backgrounds. I really like all of these for backgrounds, mm -hmm. but I can't really cut up the background any further, can I? Without cutting no. across like this. Okay, here's what you can do. You could make several or many, hundreds even if you wanted to, combinations of these colors. Yes, that's what I and should do. And then just put, don't even write numbers on here, just say the background will be one of those you know of 10 combinations that you've picked out and where some might be like two of these and one of these one of these one of these and one of these and so just hit or miss it and like do one area but then pick up another needle and oh do... god so i love this yeah because i'm thinking in terms of solids right i'm forgetting that this medium is like it for it's... me it, it pops the most when you're like blending with each knot mm -hmm. now let's say i were to start because this is my first background field one two three four what if I were to try to go diagonally? I kind of wish I flipped it and did it the other way. But from like the lightest values to the darker values. And what if I were to blend some of the yeah. white into all of them and these become my four primaries? So what if it went like, actually, no, I think I like this order. What do you think? So with these towards the bottom and the higher up you go, but having whites throughout. Yeah, having the whites mixed in. It sounds perfect. And I could have more or less, right? Like, let's say, and I know I, I start from the bottom left to the top right with this with this uh, craft, with mm -hmm. this art. Work across the row, go up the next row, across. So you're working all the way across until you get to the very top and then you're done. Oh, and what about if, for example, if this is my bottom color and it goes into this field, I shouldn't say bottom, but it goes into this field. Mm -hmm. What if at the bottom I want it the darkest and I start just the bottom loops here with three concentrated all same color yeah. but then as I go up I blend more and more with the white so in even in this part mm -hmm. as it goes up it gets lighter mm -hmm. would that work yeah you could even hold the white off until later on if you wanted to and just mm. focus more on the I don't call these dark because these this will come across yeah. as very light but um you know just like let it gradually work up because white you wouldn't have to be it wouldn't you wouldn't notice the difference right between bottom and top if you put white in in the very bottom yeah, and really, I, I like I like the idea of that. But now that I think about it, I might just want solid fields. Not solid, mm -hmm. sprinkled, but consistently sprinkled in the background. Because yeah. I don't want it to get confusing. 
right? I don't want I don't want it to become so um, much much of a vehicle for like my one idea that it loses its impact as a design. Um, but I do know that I want these to be the background color. Good. So that's a gift. That's all set. That is a that is a no brainer. And you like that too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if these are the background colors for this, I'll put these here for now because I think I have these two colors in this excellent grab bag. Those are some of my other grab bag colors, and so are these. So, all right, let's see. I'm going to separate these two. I, I think so. I think I'm going to, for the moment, reject that dark one, unless mm -hmm. we're mixing it with this one, mm -hmm. which would be quite nice. Yeah, yeah I, I put them together just to save myself one little skein making. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do. You know, I kind of do like it now that I am looking at it, because I want at least two different colors for each knot. Um, just for intro, I want to blend everything if possible. So these two colors would go great together for how many flowers do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six flowers. So this could be one flower. I think one of those would go, is that too close? No, I would, it's different. It's, okay. These are more, have a little yellow in them. I'm just realizing I have six flowers, but they all have halves. So I have 12 units. <gasps> You're gonna need lots of lots of little color. I think I might. Things. That's all right. I think I might. I might not be able to plan this the way I would plan a rug design. I feel this is a way more organic form, and I feel like I'm way more likely to be changing my color scheme as I go up, um, based on how it's going. Yeah. And for for me, at least with my first project, I think this is going to be a harder project to micromanage, and to and to plan like black and white for mm. the future. I think I might wiggle in the future. If I were doing it or recommending people who are were less free, yeah, I would I would do it on a paper first and like color it in with the paints or colored pencils and and then and then you can kind of define oh I want light on top or dark on the bottom and and a flower here the other yeah. side will be this color yeah and then and then you match your colors to your drawing yeah but it works as a as an impromptu thing too so it works both ways yeah, yeah and that. See, I'm trying to figure out, like, these two colors go great together as well. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see what colors, I might eliminate the orange for now, just because that's mm -hmm. going to go great with my next autumn rug. Yep. Um, these are kind of great together, but so are these. Yeah. You could put you could put these two together for sure. Maybe this one went in there, but, but I think I need more colors. You, you might. I yeah. think I do. So, And they're not, and here's another set that I like, right? I like yeah. these as well. The green, the, the leaves I feel, because I've got these guys for the green too. Okay. It might be that I want another green, but um, so how many leaves do I have? I have a lot of leaves, but they can also have repeats and they're going to be multicolored too. Yeah. yeah. They don't all have to be different. All right. So I, I am technical enough to need to figure out if I have six flowers, I want at least six combinations or more. Um, and I want colors that are like each other. So they glow and they're similar. Um, I don't want high contrast in the flowers. I might want high contrast in the centers. We'll see. And I don't even know that I want the centers to be split. I'll have to, that might be as I figure it out, as I go along kind of thing. I, what, I would I would make it solid. Yeah. I mean, that's I think color, that's a good call. Because otherwise you're just going to be killing yourself. Like, like, this will be solid. Yeah. I mean, like one combination. And because that's divided, you don't have to divide it. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes more work for yourself. It does. You know, I'm thinking of for the center, you know that dark color you showed me that was like, it wasn't a black, it was a dark brown. Mm -hmm. But it was such an odd color. That yeah. might be a good one for the... 15. I think you Ooh. have it. You might have it in there. Ooh, I might. I'll have to check. I, this is number 15. What? what 15 um, Lundgren. Mm. This is... So this is one of your grandparents. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just an unusual color. You know I don't like brown. But it has like a bit of purple. It, it goes with black. everything. It is incredible neutral. And it's very dramatic. It's not like poopy. You know, like <laughs> that's my thing with brown. Yeah. Um, I call it mud. When I teach class, I said this. I want to introduce you to mud. Yeah, it's, it's really so handy. good with anything dark. Yeah, I can see it being good with this. I think black would be too dark, and I think mm -hmm. another color, no matter how electric it mm -hmm. be, it would it would be confusing. Yeah. So I think mud might be might be a, a good player here. Yeah. So I might be looking for. I might be. You have a mud. I have a mud. <laughs> Thank goodness I have a mud. Do you think I have enough mud to do the centers of these? Yes. Okay. You have way more. So maybe we'll um, pause for a minute and we'll look for some more colors that fit the petal color, yeah. the, the like the flower body color family, and then come back and see what, what we ended up with. Two. 
So we've been working on the color planning here, and this is a really fun part of the project, isn't it? So we have a, you know, I might actually bring back the blues. Contrary to what I said, I'm bringing a lot of colors in that I really like together. I love what we started with. And we added off camera, we started thinking about some colors that in rug hooking, we refer to as the poison colors, right? The dark, light, dull, bright. And we pulled colors like this and the purple, some really bright ones. And Melinda, your idea was to just put like a little, one little strand in here and there mm -hmm. to give it a real punch, right? To just punch certain areas. Right. And you don't need a lot to do that. No, uh, one strand will take you firm. It'll make about... 18 knots or so in your case. That's a lot with the compartments that are this small, right? Yeah. I've created a busy composition. The only thing I'm thinking of to wrap up the color conversation is I like that plum color too. Yeah. Oh, plum. Right, because it fits with the... It fits, Which one? Um, this one. I call that eggplant. Ooh, eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> I, it fits with the warmth of the reds, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. I think I need a little bit of that, you know? So okay. we pulled a few colors that were different. Like these guys were different. I definitely think that that's handy. Mm -hmm. um, did we pull anything else while we were off camera? Um, you were looking at this Ooh, one. Oh, yeah. yes. I need some of that for sure. Definitely in there. It's it's more of this warm family, like a juicy family, right? Mm -hmm. Like a juicy uh, grapey family. I could use more of that. Yeah. Because I do have it like in my heart to add some mixed colors to every knot, right? I love this. I love this. I'm looking at the color chart here. We didn't talk about this at all, but there are some that are multis. Those that is undyed. Okay. That's natural sheep huh. color of flex of. Well, let's see. Six oh one is natural white. Six oh three um, blend. Huh. Six oh four blend. Six oh five blend. Six. That's a brown blend. Oh, it is. And then six sixteen is wow. like black sheep. Those are gorgeous. Undyed. I think I have this. Do you think I have mm -hmm. that color? That's that one. Mm -hmm. I like this color too. This is a funny kind of a neutral. Mm -hmm. Very much like what you have. Oh, okay. It is. Yep. But still, I, it could be the the fleck that's in here that make these pop. True. These are a nice heavy yarn. So you could. You could I do think one, I have two, some three. of that for the fleck. Because, you know, when you use the, we're, say, we're using the word fleck, right? That's like a, a new piece of language to acquire right now during this video. It does give you a different texture. It's a lighter weight yarn. It gives you a different texture. Visually, it creates more variety and more interest, I think. So I do want to have flex where I can. Um, this is the part that Melinda's great at. Whether people are local or not, could you do this part over the phone where you're like, at least this is my color palette. I need a bunch of flex of purple. But that's hard over the phone. It's it better is, yeah. with someone taking it, like, or someone tells me colors that they're interested in. I lay yeah. them out on the table. Say, yeah. Take a look. And yeah. if they ask, you know, what would you suggest? Although, you know, I can't counsel too much because it could just take hours and hours. But, Absolutely. But if they if they will give me ideas, so can you lay out certain colors yeah. and you can see them, um, I can help them pick out how much. Well, for me, what was the great start and what will be the backbone of the project is the grab bag. Because right? as soon as I had the grab bag, I had my color plan in place. Yeah. And then it's just a question of two or three colors of flex that were a lighter weight that made sense to me that pop the existing grab bag. It's just a good starting starting point. Even here with all the colors in the studio, for me, it worked better just to grab a grab bag. Yeah. That's just what it's meant for, isn't it? Yeah. So we were talking a little, I love this color plan right here. I really love it. And yeah. these are these are overpowering, but we know they're gonna be like small amounts. It's like, it's like a little bit of spice, a little bit of pepper or whatever onto the piece, right? You don't want, to, not in this case anyway, um, the really electric purple and then the really bright tomato, I am going to use those as, as flex. Mm -hmm. And then I get all different textures. And we were talking a little bit about uh, filling in and doing the math for filling it in. So not everybody is super technical and I am not. So while you are having this conversation with Jay, I'll probably be spacing out. But I know <laughs> part of my brain will absorb it. Absorb it. We were talking yeah. about calculating amounts. Yeah, this is a little tool that I made and anybody could do this. It's just a piece of paper and you really, you probably couldn't do it at home without having a backing. But I, I laid it down on a backing and I measured where all the knots would go. Just put a little tick with a number, five, 10, 15, 20 knots. So that's how many knots were in that space. So we were looking at this area thinking, I wonder how many knot, how much yarn do I need for that? And I'm counting. I've got those numbers so I can, let's say we start right there. We, that would be like three plus, whoops, but there, three plus seven plus eight, maybe nine. So 
So, I mean, you know, we can add this all up. Let's just say that's 40 knots. Okay, that's a, that's a number we can work with. Four, if you have a threading with three strands on it, and you're going to make 40 knots, and you, um, Deanna has said that she wants to have a fairly short pile, which I know would be about 18 knots per threading. Don't glaze over. Harkening back to this, oh, yeah. right? This, this conversation from the first video, mm -hmm. just mentally get, getting an idea for the size of the knots and the height of the pile. So when she puts on her needle one strand of this, one strand of this, and one strand of this, and she has that much yarn, she's going to get 18 knots. So if this was 40 and you make your 18 knots, you're, you're halfway done with it. You put three more strands on it and you get your, you're just about done. So you need maybe three threadings of this combination, which is just three strands of each color. Not that much yarn. It goes a long way. And this is just one way to, to, to get an idea. I think this is because I asked in the first video, oh, are there like computer programs where you can break down the mass or the, the weight, the size of each component? And you said, oh, somebody does do that. And, and, and that was very helpful. But this is also very helpful because yeah. this is this is something you can measure with your eyeballs. Right. And yeah. this makes practical sense right here without getting even on the computer. Mm -hmm. This is like to, to me, this is way more straightforward. Yeah. So that's a super handy tool, having yeah. a gauge like that, that is based on your unique, mm -hmm. not, it's not unique, but your particular background. Right. Because there are other backings that I have, like from Finland, where I make a whole different chart and they might be closer together. Yeah. And then you do it the same way, but you just get a different number. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And we decided, I don't know if we did it on or off camera, but color-wise we decided, because this is, this design is so split, right? That's the whole point is it's, we're splitting the colors, we're splitting the flowers. We're not splitting the leaves, and I think it would be too much to split the leaves. And um, the question came up, should I be doing the center solid or split? And your advice was to do it solid. And I think you're absolutely right. I think that makes a lot of sense. So, um, yeah, so we took out the muddy. I think we might have done that on camera. Okay. I think we're there with our color scheme now. What do you think? Um, I think so. I mean, do you know what you're going to do here? Yeah, we and should here? start some of these. <laughs> I think I'm going to choose as I go up. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to, when I when I sit down and I'm ready to work, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to break up my colors into color families okay. and look at them that way and decide, you know, I'm probably going to, I'm going to have a red and maroon flower. It's probably mm -hmm. going to be, for example, this flower. I don't want a huge one to be red and I don't want it to be way off center because this is like the brightest and darkest one I have. I'm going to use this for some too. So I'll probably put my darker flowers, they're going to be like the the um, outsiders, right? They'll probably be at the diagonal corners, um, which will work out well because this composition has a diagonal pull, right? And it's going to come down quite um, prominently diagonally going this way, right? The, the orientation of the design. So it's going to be really handy for me if I make these two flowers in the opposite two corners the brightest colors would make the most sense. Mm -hmm. Either that or really one bright flower in the center. But for example, I wouldn't put two bright flowers in the center because it would throw the composition, it would throw the balance of color and the weight of the color. So I'm going to be thoughtful about that. But because I'm mixing colors and I haven't done that before, I'm probably going to get, I'm going to get a feel for it as I go. I'm going to start in an area that's the background, which is perfect. And um, I can take these out since these are the random nuts. I, I hate to take your pieces yeah, out because it's, it's like your it's pieces. It's easy to it's easy to put them in and easy to take them out, but oh. they don't ever fall out. Yeah, that's a great that's a great thing to add because people do ask with rug making if you're experienced or not. Oh, are, you know, isn't the pile going to fall off? Mm -hmm. No, it's not going to fall off. But then again, neither should you vacuum it. Right, just reinforcing you don't oh, yeah. need to vacuum it. Yeah, right. Look. But I will want to complete row for row, won't I? Yeah. Okay. So you want to pick out what you want in the lower left corner. What yeah. colors? I think I, I still want to go with the original idea of using these colors for the background. And the, and the white one is a repeat. So I think I'm going to want to um, have this one with a little bit of white in this on this first row. Okay. Pick up, tell, show me those three colors again. And, and let's put, take out one. Just these two. Because these are the same, I think. Yeah. Okay, so this one is just the helper. So some of this and some of this. So um, I would, if, if we had more time, and yeah. when you go home, you can do this. Yeah. Just write yeah, light blue, white, white. Okay. And just like, 
Okay. Just so that you kind of know what you've got going. So do you want two blues or two whites? Okay. Now let's specific. just see for the fun of it. Okay, so the white one is, is a longer skein. Yep. And in that case, I would just, and th this long, I would cut it off right off the bat. Yep. But don't throw it away. And um, should we do that part on video? Oh, probably. Okay. Um, let me see. Oh, it's recording? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, Melinda, you put together the first knots, which are the two blues. It's like the one it's white. It's a threading. It's a threading. Because you're going to make the knots. Okay. Yep, it's a threading. But what we're, some of this is um, vintage yarn from another company, from, from what the blue one is. Yep. They, they made them different lengths. And so, since there's so much difference, we're going to cut that off and save this because you never know when you're yep. going to need Rag bag. Yep. And then I thread these guys. Yes. Oop. Should we and, use the right? And most of the rear really yarns you can fold like that. Some some of the Rama yarn is so thick you can't fold it and force it through. So you do like this, or you pull it through more. Um, more, more, almost half. Okay. Just so you don't have to wang your arm way out. That looks good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the first knots are going to go where? And do I go this way? You keep it. Okay. Her needle is going to always point to the left, and she's moving along to the right. Okay. And she never flips it over and goes to the back. It's all on the top. If I were left-handed, would I be over here? Yes. Okay. Doing the exact same thing. Okay, mirror image. But mm -hmm. I'm right-handed, so am I combing here or here? Right here. Okay. And right under here? Yeah. Okay. And, and Norway has determined in their kits anyway not to make them on the hem because it just makes it more difficult. I see. And I pull through to the desirable height. Yeah. It, that just happened to fold up on itself. Yeah. And if I were holding it in my hand, because this is my very first knot ever. Yeah. So hold that pile down, yep. down towards down. your belly. Yeah. Now toss oh. the yarn up like that yep. and pick up the very next bundle. That's it. That's a, right under here like this? Yep, nice and slow. Yep. And pull it through. I'll get out of your way. And that is the head of the knot, and you've made your first Rhea knot. First knot ever! <laughs> And now I'm just going to hold it to whatever height I want. Yes, but is this thrust going to come down to there? Ooh. Do you want to have a whatever this color is there? Ooh, I think I do because this row is much higher up. So I think yes. I need to skip this Maybe. one. Well, I, I would do. Yeah, you could you could skip and fill it in if you don't know what you want to do. But if you know what this is, you, we could put. Ooh, let's do a second one. And should I use a second needle? Yes. And this is where the block comes in, right? Because, well, not, I mean, I, I, I know I'm still threaded up, but I can put it in there for now. Yeah. And if they were cut, right, if they were cut and I had a whole bunch of different threadings going with my various combos, I would put them, I'm sorry, all into my needle. So now for the second one. What color will that be? Oh. Uh-oh. It's like she's um, coloring, looking in the crayon box. <laughs> <with> color. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like. Maybe this combo. Yeah. All right. So let's see you. Um, cause we know this comes straight. Let me see what you do with the, how I, how I cut it. Yeah. Okay. This is a very long one. So you're going to have some excess with this. Okay. Um, I'll leave the tag up here just because it holds things together. Okay. And I'll take, just cut it. <laughs> but, but it does make, it's, there's going to be a little bit extra here, but this is a nice yarn. Nordiscus. Nice. Nordiscus. Mm. Rhea yarn from Sweden. No longer made. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a nice vintage yarn. So one strand of this? How about two strands of I this? I think two strands of that. Yeah. Do you think it Because this one's thinner than this. It is. How about go three strands of that? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then one strand of this? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it, it is thinner. Yep. Let's do two and one. So I'll put these together. Mm -hmm. Three. At three and one. Yep. Yeah, because this is like that bright chartreuse type color. I think it'll give a good pop to that leaf down there. And then we can cut that one um, to the same height yes. because it's a... And this has like a, 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 a wanky end, so yeah, let's just get rid of that. Off. Okay, yeah. let's just... Yeah, that should... Because the pile is going to show, right? And you can, you can trim it a little, right, if you're having like a pile yeah. emergency. You, you don't want to. Okay. There's, there's no need to like leave the... Well, only in the very last knot when you might have an extra inch or so. Something that you can't... Something that you can't make a knot out of. If it's three inches... You can you can you can get one more knot out of it. Okay. And the way you do that is you That's make the you loop know. very short, and as you're pulling it down, then you pull the loop down. After you, you make the loop very short, you make yes. Okay. Just just to give your hand room to move. And I'm going to come into the tip of the leaf here. Yep. Very good. You advance right off the bat. So do you? How long do you want it to hang on the end? That's a good question. Longer. No. 
you can, yeah well, whatever because it's going to make this yeah. the thrust of this leaf go long too but that's fine too so yeah yeah that's I mean, fine that's you, a, this will be a fringe yeah it'll be a salvador dolly kind of a leaf and then I'll you do have one to, more yeah then you cut back as you move up to, to like 18 knots okay for threading. oh this is very fun this yeah. is very fun yes and then I'm going to switch back to this guy. Yeah, I would. Yeah. And you just leave that one there. And I'm and I'm just kind of anticipating the height the length of this loop. Okay. So I'm going to hold it down like this while I do this now because now this the reason I switched to the green right is because it's the tip of the leaf. Right. And now I want to go back to the background color so I'm right here again yep. in the next obvious hole. So unlike rug hooking where it's like is what hole do I fill in next? And it's a bit, it's a bit of a like, well, you know, you have to make that decision as you go based on experience and common sense. But with this craft, it's much more obvious. It's the next hole. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's really nice. And then so I'll go your loops more. are long and that's good. I just want to point out to people watching that, that she's not going to maintain that through the whole thing. Or that would be a very, um, a, no, very no shape nail. design was it amorphous. Yes. So, um, so this is like just a fringe that she's chosen to have. Yeah. Yeah. And and at the end, if I want my fringe very uniform like my bangs, I can cust, kind of custom cut it. You or, could, or but you I wouldn't. would not. Okay. I would not. Because you, because and the reason you wouldn't is because you like the kind of wild. Feel not to so it. much wild as natural, like okay. fur. Yes. Yep. And and when if you cut everything square, and you have a half inch gap, mm -hmm. you're gonna see bangs. Yeah. So the, I want this row to mesh with this one. So if you have some, kind of shorter. This will when you your next oh, I see. it'll mesh. Oh, that will naturally. be nice. That will be nice. Yeah. This is extremely easy to do. Extremely. <laughs> Good. I'm just being careful about pulling it through. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to keep my loops fairly Oh, I'm twisting a little. You know, it doesn't really matter, but go ahead and untwist it just because um it doesn't matter. I wouldn't even Okay. I mean, I'll try not yeah. to twist as the, I the go. The problem really is up here it's going to get kind of kinky if it twists too much, but Okay. It, I'll leave that one alone. Sorry, when things get kinky. All right. Okay. You did something. I want to. This is good that you uh -oh. caught this on film. This is a, a little error. Okay. And you had your loop. Remember, I said you <sighs> lay your yarn up. Yes. You laid it down. Yes. I didn't say anything because I wanted to see. This is what it would look like if you pulled it. So if you ever see that, uh, and then you'd have to come down over it, and that would be wrong. Well, that would be. I mean, that would be that's bad. A, that's actually is a style that some people use, but I don't know how they do it, and I've never recommend. Yes, that's how you fix it. All right. So that's that's our example. That's our demonstration. I'm glad that I did that. Yeah. Because that too. that is bound to it's bound to happen to me another thousand times on this rug. Too. Yeah. That's so funny. You, so always keep it down, like you said, toward your belly. Mm-hmm. Well, you start off with it down toward your belly. Halfway through, you lay, you let the yarn lay up. Okay. Now, I would pull your needle away from that. There you go. Okay. Yes. And see, this is laying up as it should be. Yeah. And I like how you, uh, let me just make, yeah, okay. I like how you are bending the fabric. Why not? That's okay. Yeah. Okay. And if you had the stick, you couldn't. No. No, I couldn't deal with that stick. That would be way, way, way too um, confined. Yeah. And you don't even have to fold that. It will come up naturally to make a, a loop. Amazing. This is just amazing. All right. So I think we should probably end soon before okay. we have a calamity. Oh, no. Um, but I think it's coming really well. Yeah. And I think I can easily do this. I think you can too. The next row starts right above this one. Mm -hmm. Make every knot right above the one below it. Yeah. Um, the next one with green will be fun. I'll probably put it right over there and do green, 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 green to the top of that one. Maybe one more. You just you just have to kind of gauge where that line crosses. Yeah, it's 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 um it, it's a uh, you decide as you go kind of a thing. It has to be right. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So th I'm gonna work. obviously I'm not gonna complete the whole thing here. I forgot we were recording. I got so into it. I forgot that we were yeah. recording. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just gonna be. I have to make decisions at every juncture. Is mm -hmm. am I, is this part of this or is it part yes. of the one behind it, uh, below it? So yeah. I mean, this is super easy. Now, what will I do when I'm connected? When you're connected, do I just do like this and keep it in the? Oh yeah. Yeah, you fine. could do that. Yeah. And then when I'm working, I like having them in this thing when I'm working, right? Yeah. Oh, when you when find. you have a workstation, but not so much traveling. No, no. But this this is great. And would you roll it like this to keep it? Sure. Yeah. 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 It's not fragile, so it's. Whoa! What a lot of fun. So we're gonna. I'm gonna finish this. We're gonna get going and and put the videos up for you. I'm gonna get the wool that I am gonna use for this project. 
which I think is my absolutely ideal color scheme. I'm so happy with what we chose. Yay. I'm super I happy. I cannot wait to see it coming together. Me too. And it's it's like so mid-century modern. I, and I love this style. Oh, you know what? One thing I wanted to do is show you these two older rugs that I brought. Oh, I'm cool. hoping that it fits my existing collection of rugs. And we want to give that great tip, right? This is an older one mm -hmm. um, that I got from eBay. Nice. And the reason I got it was because it was made in 1972, which was the year that I was born. Wow. And you could tell by looking at this label yeah. that it was a certain company. Nordiska. That's the same company oh, the same that made this yarn. Yep. And that weirdly. I had that in there. That's probably the very same color. Oh my gosh. Isn't that nutty? <gasps> oh, that's fun. Ooh, that's so fun. Yeah. And then this was another one that I got actually that came out of Japan. And maybe that it made its way yeah. there, but very yeah. different. It's definitely a... 100% rear rug. Absolutely. And it has happens to be by the same company. Yes, yep. it has the same tag. Yep. And this one was made in 1969. And maybe a good point to sort of end on is um, it's good to label your stuff, isn't it? Yes. That's the yeah. thing. And you sometimes send the label that someone could stitch well, on the back. Yeah. Or... With the Rauma kits, the Rauma company does okay. provide a label yep. and the person writes on their name and stitches it onto the back. And if you are doing your own on random backing or whatever, make your own label. Just a little piece of cloth you put in the back. It's really important, isn't it? For yeah. the sake of history, for the sake of documenting. Yeah. This yeah. is insanely fun. I have one more little thing I want to surprise you with. So maybe, beside having, besides having all of this fun with wool, with starting my rear rug, I have this excellent souvenir, right? Because Melinda is an artist and she designed a bunch of um, prints and shirts. I'm getting the hops one because is it okay, Melinda, to say that you also make beer? I do. And this is like a great tribute to your space here. <laughs> but I'm super happy. You're going to see me wearing this shirt all the time. And I was looking at some of your woodcuts because you've got many of these on the website too. I do. They're in my Etsy shop too. And you're, they are extraordinarily beautiful images. And you are holding this is the original block that I carve for hops. I mean, this is so fun, isn't it? I know a lot of people do other other arts and crafts, and I'm sure printmaking is one of them. But that is absolutely exquisite, and it made this amazing shirt. Awesome. Oh, Melinda, I've had the most fun today being here this with is, you. So this has been an amazing um, morning. I'm not even sure it's morning anymore. <laughs> yes, it is. Good. We've had such a great time. I'm going to finish going through everything a little bit, but I think that between these two videos, that we have a great sort of feel for how to start this this rug technique mm -hmm. and in my mind despite reading the book despite the past videos and conversations i still felt like i might screw it up you know because that's just mm -hmm. the, the way that i am and now that i've just done a few practical knots with you i, I have complete confidence that i feel like good this is absolutely something that i can manage it's very mechanical it's very repetitive but in a relaxing way it's not, uh, it's not puzzling in any way, right? It's very yeah. straightforward. It's very forgiving. You still get to use for people like us, if you're watching this channel, who love your fibers, you love the intense colors, you love color planning, you love the tactile experience of touching fiber. This is like the ultimate form for you of rug making. Yeah. So it's great this, to be able this to. This really is keeping Rhea rug making as the... Scandinavians, the Nordic people did it uh, mostly mid-century modern period, but bringing it from the Viking days and put it in the hands of the world through backings that are woven and yarn that is available. And thank you for sharing it with your world. I'm so glad that we were able to. It was well worth it was well worth coming down to Maryland to do this because this is really, really it's important and I'm glad you made that point. It's important to keep these great forms, these great historic forms. Um, particularly of rug making in our rug making community alive because if they disappear that part of our history is gone right it's just missing it's a gap mm -hmm. so it is important um, to keep to keep it going to keep it alive so if you have any rug making needs in terms of being you know starting your rear rug you should absolutely be in touch with Melinda uh, check out your website check out bird call studio mm -hmm. check out bird call the Etsy store the Etsy store tells people uh, the long write-up and lots of pictures of everything that I offer. So yeah. that's a good place to start. And certainly the book is a... Where do we put the book? I want to hold it up one oh, more time. Yeah. Let's go over there. The book is a great one more time. Yeah. yeah, I do recommend the book. I do too. It's it's not just pretty, right? It's like all... You know, even when you're working on something simple, sometimes you, you blank out a little bit. This really keeps you on target, right? Because it's not just a, it's a creative 
a gallery inspiration book. It's also a technique book. It's a how-to book. So yeah. this is really handy to have. Yeah. I talk to people, in, know, knowing that some people are mathematically inclined and some people are totally not mathematically inclined, and how to do it one way and how to do it the other way and how to just make it work no matter what. It speaks to both mm -hmm. types of people for sure. So anyway, get going on your rear rug. Now is the time to start, isn't it? Well, why not? Why not? Why, why not? Why not? Why not? Okay, yeah. Why not? We had to do a stupid joke at the end. Why not not? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a shirt for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll get going. Oh, man. Well, thank you so much again. You're welcome. And tune in next time to Ribbon Candy Hooking. Like, subscribe, share, all of that stuff, and spread the word about making rear rugs. Rear. I mean, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.